Welcome to Njenje Media Channel. This is a channel where we explore the truth behind the headlines. The former president of Nigeria, Good Luck Ebele Jonathan, says to the former pres Prime Minister of Britain, David Cameron, David Cameron, you are a bloody liar. David Cameron, you lie, you lie, you lie. In his recent published memoir, for the records, David Cameron claimed that the then Nigerian leader thwarted efforts to rescue some of the 276 school girls abducted by Boko Haram in 2014. That is what we now today know as the famous Chibok girls. Under David Cameron's government, marriage equality law was passed in Britain in 2013. Jonathan, as you all know today, is 61 years old, now responded to the allegation by saying that at that time, Cameron was enacting and pushing for an unbearable pressure on him after the president passed a bill prohibiting same-sex marriage in Nigeria. That is what Jonathan responded, basically saying, David Cameron, you lie. You lie because you were just trying to push that Nigeria accept same-sex marriage. Now let us look into Jonathan's response. Jonathan said on his, page, on his Facebook wall, he wrote himself. He said, and we quote, I read the comments by the former British Prime Minister, David Cameron, in his new book, For the Records, in which he accused me, good luck Jonathan, and the Nigerian government, which I headed then, of corruption. He accused me of corruption and rejecting the help of the British government in rescuing the Chibok girls who were kidnapped on April 14, 2014. It is quite sad, Jonathan said, that Cameron would say this because nothing of such ever occurred. They offered me no help. As president of Nigeria, I not only write this letter to the then Prime Minister David Cameron, I also wrote to the then US President Barack Obama and the then French President Holland Francois Hollande, as well as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu, appealing to them to help for help in rescuing these girls. How could I write to appeal for help and then reject the very thing I appealed for? Jonathan queried. Jonathan was just asking how can he lie that he rejected any help given to him. At the same time, Jonathan was the person that wrote. Jonathan continued again. Also, history contradicts Mr. Cameron. If you guys remember, Jonathan said, on March 8, 2012, when the same Boko Haram linked terrorists, ab when the then Boko Haram linked terrorists abducted a British expatriate named Chris Magnomos, along with an Italian hostage, Franco Lamo Linare, in Sokoto, I, President Jonathan, as Nigerian president, personally authorized a rescue effort by the members of the British military Spe special boat service, supported by the officers and men of the Nigerian army to free the abducted men. So, having set a president like that, why would I reject British help in rescuing the Chibok girls if it was offered at all? It was never offered. So how can I reject something that was never offered to you? I was, it was also, I also authorized the secret deployment of troops from the United Kingdom, the United States and Israel as a result of the Chibok incident. So how Mr. Cameron could say this with a straight face beats me. And we at Njenje Media will add, it does not only beat good luck Jonathan. It beats us all as black people that the white can lie to our face and it beats us all silly. Good luck, Jonathan continued. Moreover, on March 8, 2017, 
The British government of former Prime Minister Theresa May, in a widely circulated press statement, debunked this allegation and said there was no truth in it. Mr. Car Mr. Cameron had similar stated statement to the observers of the UK. So even a fellow Prime Minister have debunked Mr. Cameron's lie, then the question would be, why is Mr. Fantastically Corrupt Prime Minister saying this now? In his book, Mr. Cameron failed to mention that I wrote him requesting his help on Chibok Girls. Why did he suppress that information? Why did he not mention that I wrote him? I remind him that copies of that letter exist at the State House in Nigeria and in London. He never called me on the phone to offer any help. On the contrary, I am the one that reached out to him. He accused me of appointing generals based on political consideration. How could that be when I fired my service chief twice in five years to show that I would not tolerate anything less than meaningful progress in the war on terror? That is where Good Luck Jonathan is 2 million percent better than Buhari. Buhari for the last five years has been using Borotai as the chief of army staff, even when the same Borotai has retired. Buhari cannot fire Brutai. Buhari cannot make any reshufflement in his security structure. What is Buhari afraid of? We may ask that in Jinja Media. Let us come back and we'll continue. Jonathan continues. I was completely blind to the ethnic or political consideration in my appointment. Yes, we at Njenje Media, we agree with Jonathan and we say we are all adults. We lived with it and we saw it. Jonathan was so blind to ethnic nonsense that even to a point he hurt himself. Remember when he even Azazi, his own brother, was let go. That is Jonathan for you. In civil and military matters, I appointed people that I had never even met prior to appointing them. Based on their professional pedigree, though I was from the south, most of my service chief came from the north. Yes, we are all alive to see how Jonathan, because the north were backing, and Jonathan let Ihejirika go. Because the north were not happy that suddenly they've been sitting on the promotions of Ihejirika and so many people from the south. Suddenly, someone who is from the south comes out and starts looking at files. Start looking at files that they've been sitting on for so long, so long a time. So long a time they sat on the files, on the files, on the files. And when Ihejirika came in, Ihejirika started working on those files and started promoting people. This is who Jonathan was. Again, we, should we remind us of how the, uh, how the Northern governors actually made Jonathan to remove Odumegu, the former, minister, the former um, chairman of MBL, Nigerian Brewers Limited, who was brought in for the Nigerian Population Commission. But that man talked too much that he went on a national TV and said that the census Nigeria has been having since 1890 has been always been fraudulent in favor of the North. And Kwankwazo and all the Northern PDP members swore that that man must go. And so was it. The man did what? The man went. Let us come back to what Jonathan said. Jonathan continued, I do not, however, know that Mr. Cameron has long nursed deep grudges against me for reasons that have been published in various media, if you all remember. On the July 24th, 2013, while celebrating the passage of the United Kingdom's Marriage Same-Sex Couple Act of 2013, Mr. Cameron said, I want to export gay marriage around the world. Hey, alo, okoko bioko. How can this Oyibo be exporting abnormalities to us? Yet, these same people would not want to accept our own export, which is polygamy. They will want to criminalize polygamy and want us to accept gay marriage. Anyway, let us continue and come back to what Jonathan said. At that occasion, Jonathan said, he boasted that he would send the team that successfully drafted and promoted the bill to nations like Nigeria, saying that inter alia. I have told, I have told the bill team I am now going to reassign them because, of course, 
all over the world, people would have been watching this piece of regulation. David Cameron boasted on that day that he was so happy that he got that bill passed. As president of Nigeria at that time, Jonathan continued, I came under almost unbearable pressure from the Cam Cameron administration to pass legislation supporting LGBTQ same-sex marriage in Nigeria. My conscience could not stomach that because president of Nigeria, I swore on the Bible to advance Nigerians' interest and not the interest of the United Kingdom or any foreign power. As much on Monday, January 13th, 2014, I signed the same-sex prohibition bill into law after the bill had been passed by overwhelming bipartisan majority of the Nigerian parliament in line with the wishes and the aspiration of the Nigerian people. This happened shortly after a study of 39 nations around the world by the, United, uh, by the U.S. Pew Research Center came up with a finding which indicated that 98% of Nigerians, 98% listing people, 98% is next to 100%. 98% of Nigerians were opposed to the idea of gay marriage. Oh, we at Njenje Media, in 2013, we were opposed to gay marriage. Today is 2019. We are still opposed to gay marriage. Immediately after I took this patriotic action, Jonathan said, my government came under almost unbearable pressure from David Cameron, who reached me through envoys and made subtle and so subtle threat against me and my government. Are we now seeing the reason why they did away with Gaddafi? Because Gaddafi wouldn't have that as well. Gaddafi said it was against Quran, it was against Allah, it was against everything that is Islam. And they went against him with all full force. And Gaddafi didn't leave to tell the stories. In fact, meetings were held at the Obama White House and at the Portocolis House in Parliament in the UK with then Nigerian opposition to disparage me after I had signed the same sex marriage prohibition bill into law. That is again, we are lying, Mohammed. Oyegun and Buhari comes in again. Even Atiku Abubakar, who is now in PDP, running from pillar to post, they were amongst the people that worked with the British in order to bring Nigeria down. On the issues of corruption, it suffices to say that Mr. Cameron is not as competent as Transparency International, which is global acknowledged as the adjudicator who is corrupt and who is not. During my administration in 2014, Nigeria made her best ever improvement on the annual Transparency International Corruption Perception Index, moving from 144 the previous year to 136, an eight-point improvement. As a nation, we have not made such improvement on the C, um, CPI, that is, Corruption Perception Index before or after 2014. In line with these facts, I would urge the public and we at Njenje Media is now joining Good Luck Jonathan to say, we are urging the public to take Mr. Cameron's accusation with a grain of salt, meaning a pinch of salt. That is what Good Luck Jonathan is saying. We at Njenje Media will say, go and buy a bag of salt or buy a container load of salt and Use it to eat what David Cameron have said. Good luck, Jonathan concludes. I will not be the first person to go accuse him of lying on account of his book. And with that, the reaction in the UK so far, I definitely will not be the last. Good luck, Jonathan. The chairman of Good luck, Jonathan Foundation. Again, Good luck, Jonathan wrote this and he replied, David Cameron. Now, the analysis from Njenje Media or the comment from Njenje Media will be, it is good that Gulag Jonathan has come out to clear his name. But we at Njenje Media is calling Gulag Jonathan to please, please write his own book in order to counter this narrative. The only way generations unborn can forgive you is that one day the children, when you are no longer here, when we are no longer here, the children will pick up David Cameron's book and read. They must have a book equally, a counter-narrative than they will read. It is time we liberate our mind 
from this mental slavery because skin color does not give intelligence that they came to our shores when our forefathers were asleep and took them unawares does not mean that we the younger ones now does not know the game we know the game we understand the game and we know how to play the game once more this is in Media channel subscribe to this channel for more updates like this